Hey guys, we're live on the moon. And a slither. A slither of a moon it is. Look at that. I think that this moon right here is the last that we're going to see of it. And tomorrow starts the uh, the new moon, the dark moon, the new moon, which it's completely dark. You'll note one thing as I do a survey of this uh, slither, there's not much to see. And yes, it is in focus. It's just, uh, it rose only about a, an hour ago, and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And you can see the, 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 the sky is turning blue. That's why you, it, it's, uh, the sun is rising. The sun will be risen in 30 minutes. And uh, I put it off as long as I could to get it up in the air. It still weaves in and out, but you'll, you're you going to get an idea of what a, a slither looks like. Uh, one thing I will say, this is on the southern part of the moon right here. And this is that sea area. You're, you're seeing parts of the moon you never saw before in shadow. So some things do come out. But let, let me show you something. You know how I've been working with my camera controls to get a better image. And this thing is so kind of dim up there that you just don't have much. See, I can I can roll it down, but there's no there's no detail. And if I roll it up too much, it just we're just we just don't have too much to work with. I'm I'm pretty good with video, and I can work work with the different uh, weaknesses of the signals. But uh, this in particular is not the best uh, but I figure I'll come up here like I said I would and just do an exploratory of the moon every day and uh, if it's a slither it's a slither who knows I might run into a, a flying saucer taking off from a mountain range now what does that look like isn't that strange it looked I, I went. I was visiting my sister up in Pittsburgh, in, in the area of Pennsylvania, and they got a museum up there. Museum up there called the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, one of the best for fossils in the world. Got a lot of dinosaurs, and I've seen something like this embedded in st stone, or I, I should say, entombed as a fossil in a riverbed. And that looks just like a mouth of some kind of a fish with his body curled up. I know that's a crater, and I have quite a, an imagination, as you you have found out, no doubt. That's what that looks like. That's a, a matter of fact. Let's just see what we can do with that. I don't think we can do anything with it. I'll, I'll work the brightness a little bit. Turn the saturation up just a dab. Yeah, see, there's nothing to. We just don't have very much to work with. I'm I'm doing this also for a purpose. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that get in telescopes, just got them. And you say, well, what is it going to look like when I get a slither of the moon? Well, I'm showing you. Not only that, I'm showing you how difficult it is to focus. How difficult all call it is to get a really crisp image. You're going to see all that through your telescope when you try to set yours up. So there is a method to my madness. And as you probably found out in my videos, I like a, I'm like a teacher. I, when I was at Texaco, I used to have classes all, a lot. I taught people to do things, and then when I was in, I learned it all in the military and the Rangers because uh, I was a team leader, squad leader rather, rather, and I had two team leaders under me, and I, I used to teach classes to them all the time. I don't know what this is. This is something strange. A crater, a crater, a crater with something in the middle, and we got 
something to find sticking up there, something to find sticking up there, and I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, let's continue our survey. Matter of fact, let me see if I can turn the exposure down just, just a dab. So I turn it down too much, it gets too dark. You see, I just don't have the range of motion for the the controls. It's kind of strange here. I'm looking at the moon and the sun is rising. I haven't, I can't see the sun, but I can see a yellow horizon, and that's why all this is kind of turning blue instead of from black. I guess all in all, it's been a pretty good month for me on this uh, telescope. It's my first full month with it. I got out just about every night, at least weather the, the, that the weather let me. We saw some really interesting things. Um, I will say for the next couple days there will not be a moon, so I won't be doing moon moon shots. Uh, I am going to be getting out every morning though and do, trying to do this uh, this sun. I uh, posted my first sun video yesterday evening called. Uh, 001 Sun Musings, and uh, it it was a I was running some tests with Mike at his place, and we uh, we did capture that uh, Belmont uh, solar, uh, you know that sunspot on the on uh, the one that's going to be causing all the uh, X 1.9 flares on the planet here tomorrow or the next day after that. And I intend on trying to look at the sun every morning and kind of following it for a while, to, especially with these flares coming up. The other thing I want to say before I close, I, I'm going to, I, I took two videos of the, uh, of the moon in high resolution. They, they weren't very good, but they, they showed you a lot of detail, and I'm going to get better at that, at that guys. I want to make a video, a special video on my MacBook that I can do zooms and pans and show you what I can see. I can see structures. I can see an atrium up there. I can see buildings, squares, L-shaped buildings. I see everything, straight angles and, and right angles and left angles and all kinds of things that just are not natural. And I'm going to point them out to you in a, in a special video, maybe tomorrow or the next day. Anyhow, I hope you all buckle up. If this flare comes in, make sure you stay inside. Don't get outside. Got animals, keep them inside. It's going to be a nasty bugger. In the meantime, clear skies, guys.